So hello everyone, this is Daily Developing here and today we're going to be learning how to write a recursion. Just what is it and let's see if we can practice. So first thing, let's learn how to write a factorial. So by the way, if you don't know what factorial is, it's pretty much, it's like this exclamation mark, right? So 5 factorial is 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and um, so there's an, actually an exception with factorials. So 0 factorial equals to 1. Um, and now today let's, we're going to be writing this with using recursions. So uh, let's start writing. Let's do factorial. It takes the number n. So first thing what we have to do is let's make if n is less than or equal to 1 return 1 now return n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1 so this is about it for our factorial um, recursion so what happens here is as you see this is what's called a recursion so I am calling this function inside of the function right so it's kind of a loop you know if you think about it recursion is sort of a loop and if we right now try to you know run it let's see factorial of 5 right and run right here it gave us 120 factorial of 4 oops all right 24 factorial of 3 and let's check zero. All right, it also gave us one. Now you might be a little bit confused on how this function actually works. And that's per uh, and I perfectly understand that. And for that reason, I will try to explain it to you and walk you through the steps. So first, let's start with, uh, well, zero and one. Let's take zero factorial. So when n is zero, Right? It's going to come down here, okay, n is less than 1, so it's going to give us 1. So that's how 0 factorial it gives us 1. And the same goes for 1 factorial, right? It's less than or equal to 1, sure, so it's just going to return 1. Now, let's go if, if for example, it's 2. So what will, what will it do if it's 2 factorial? So it'll return n, so that's 2, multiplied by factorial of n minus 1. So multiplied by 1 factorial right and so now it'll go into recursion so it's going to call and ask what is 1 factorial so it's go this thing right here it's going to be thrown in recursion okay and it's going to give us this thing right 1 so it's 2 times 1 and so at the end it gives us 2 let's just say now we put 3 factorial how will this work? So it will be 3 multiplied by 2 factorial. Right? So what it will do is it will take the 2. It will throw it in the factorial function. It will throw it in recursion. Okay. So that recursion will return us 2. Right? So it's going to be just 3 multiplied by 2. Right? Equals 6. When we have 4 factorial what will it do all right so it's going to do 4 multiplied by 3 factorial now it's going to take this 3 throw it in the recursion it'll give us 6 right so it's going to make then 4 multiplied by 6 24 right and the same goes, let's just do one last example, 5 factorial. 5 multiplied by 4 factorial. So the same exact thing. It's going to throw it in the recursion, right? And we'll make it 5 times 4, times 24, sorry. Because 4 factorial, the factorial will give us 24 and it give us 120. That's how. So if you think about it, this is exactly what will happen when we when we hear let's say called 5 factorial right oh oops 
when we call 5 factorial, it gives us 120. And the reason why it does this is, okay, 5 factorial. So first, it will try to figure out what's 4 factorial. To, to figure out 4 factorial, it will have to figure out what's 3 factorial. To figure out 3 factorial, it has to figure out what's 2 factorial. To figure out what's 2 factorial, it has to figure out what's 1 factorial. All right? So then it finds 1. Once it finds 1 factorial, it'll find 2 factorial. Once it knows 2 factorial, it'll find 3 factorial. Once it knows 3 factorial, it'll find 4 factorial. And once it knows 4 factorial, then it'll go to your 5 factorial and spit out 120. So this is how pretty much the recursion works here. This is what happens. This is what, what was happening in, uh, during the recursion. So it was getting... It was growing okay deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until it reached one it, it'll go it'll keep going until it reaches zero or one and once it reaches one then it goes backwards okay so now i can find two i'll, I'll i will put it here right so three times two factorial so you're just gonna do three times two all right i know three factorial now substitute for three factorial now substitute for four factorial um this is the idea now let's just uh, try to also write another um, example. So not one of one more examples would be let's write a Fibonacci sequence. So I don't know if you know this, but Fibonacci sequence pretty much goes like this. It's one, one, two, three, five, eight. So the idea is um, that every number equals to its previous two numbers, right? So for example. Uh, so first two numbers actually equal to one, right? Or actually, I think I think the very first one equals to zero. All right, so it equals to zero, one, and now okay, this number is the sum of previous two, so zero plus one. All right, this sum of previous two, one plus one gives us two, one plus two gives us three, two plus three gives us five, three plus five gives us eight. So next number would be. 5 plus 8, right? So 13. And so far, so on. Next number, 21. Um, and this is how pretty much Fibonacci sequence goes. It, it just It is just uh, pretty much f of n, right? Equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. This is pretty much how Fibonacci sequence goes. And now let's, try, let's uh, write this. So def. Um, and give us a number. All right, so in this case, actually let's not number, but do index. All right, so the zeroth Fibonacci, let's just do zeroth number is zero. First will be one. And then second will be, you know, and keep going. So this is zero index, one first index, second index, third index, and so far. So, all right. First thing what we have to do is uh, if index is less than or equal to one, then return index. All right. So if index is zero, just return zero. If index is one, return one. Now, if it's not, if it's two, right? In that case, what we have to do is return, and let's do Fibonacci of index minus one plus Fibonacci of index minus two. All right, let's just do print real quick. Print Fibonacci. Let's pick, okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is fifth one, right? Let's just pick five. All right, it gave us five. So now six, let's pick seventh one. All right, gave us 13. And now just eighth, just to make sure it works. All right, 21. And now again, let's, let's try to break this down on exactly how this works. So let's start with when index is equal to zero, right? Well, it's just going to return index, so... When index is zero, it just returns zero. When index is one, right? When index equals to one, it's also going to be hold on. Zero, right? This pretty much returns zero. 
when index is 1, it returns 1 because it returns index. Now, when index is 2, it returns when it, uh, you know, Fibonacci of 0 plus Fibonacci of 1. Or Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0, right? Because, yeah, it doesn't really matter the order. Now, to find the Fibonacci of 0, it'll throw it back into recursion, right? And Fibonacci of 0, we know it will return 0. So right here, okay? So that was going to find it. And Fibonacci of 1, again, throw it back into recursion. We know, okay, so it's 0 plus 1. So it equals to 1. When index equals to 3, right, it's just going to throw it back into the loop. Say, all right, so it's fib it's index 2 plus index 1. Now, to find this, it's going to go all the way back here. It's going to find 1. To find this, it'll come right here, right? This is when index is 2. When, uh, and so what's going to happen? Okay, so we found already when index is 2, it returns 1. 1 plus 1, 2. When index equals 4, what it's going to do is, again, F Fibonacci of 3, which is this thing right here, right? This is um, Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of index 2. And index 2 is that thing right here this thing this is two so okay we know that when Fibonacci is two it's one when Fibonacci is three is uh this equals to oh we didn't say what it equals to yeah so uh it equals to uh so what is it what was it so okay Fibonacci of two is one which is one okay so it equals to two because one plus one in here all right so Fibonacci of three is two right so we know that this is two plus Fibonacci of 2. So I think Fibonacci of 2, yeah, we calculated it, counted it as 1. So it'll find that Fibonacci on order 4 equals to 3. And it just keeps going this way, right? So this is exactly how the recursion works. It kind of, you know, at first, I think it takes some time to get used to. But the idea is that you start, um, let, let's just say at 4, and it just keeps going keeps going until it reaches either 0 or 1. When index is 0 or 1, that's when it stops. It returns, right? So it'll go from 4 all the way back to these numbers right here. And when it reaches them, it'll go back, right? So it has to find, in order to find Fibonacci of 4, it has to find Fibonacci of 3 and 2. Once it finds, to find 2, it has to find 1 and 0, right? Well, it has them, okay, it'll find 2. After it knows 2, it has to find 3. And so on. So it'll go in depth and then back. Okay. So uh, I hope I hope this made sense. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please put thumbs up uh, and like it.